screwed up and Ernie's dead because of it. Wrong about Mitch. Wrong about Ernie. It's a hell of a profile. We might as well blow it up and start all over again. Well, we got three victims now, so let's go to work. Besides the way they looked, there must have been something else they had in common. Why? I have no idea. It just seemed like something to say. They didn't belong to the same gym, the same church. They worked at different places. Waitress, uh, bookstore clerk, record store salesperson. OK. Let's assume this is the kind of guy who just falls in love at the drop of a hat, right? All right. Now, did he come on to them or vice versa? Well, he said woman made him suffer. So I, I doubt right, he... Right, so they came on to him. Or maybe he thought they were coming on. You got a waitress and two salespeople. Service jobs. They serve him lunch. They find him a book. Maybe they smile at him. And he thinks, oh, she loves me. Maybe this guy was a regular customer at all the places the girls worked. We talked to the owner of Tracy's restaurant. Yeah, but he wouldn't necessarily know who's a regular at the bookstore. So who'd be familiar enough with the area that they'd know who all the regulars are? Delivery guys, mailmen, cabbies. That could be Julianne. Hi. Tommy, send out units on this call. And so now you say that I'm perverted? It was the first word that came to mind. Well, then you take the responsibility. She's dead, and it's your fault. I thought we understood each other. I'd like to understand. Oh, no, you wouldn't. No, I really would. This must be eating you up. I mean, you're a sensitive guy, you're a smart guy. Smart enough to know what you're trying to do. Phone booth, 94th and 1st. Go! Never there. I want patrols doubled from 89th and 1st to 96th and 3rd. You got it. While they're doing that, we start talking to cops on the beat, delivery men. It might take a while, but maybe one of them saw something. You got Ernie on your conscience, and I got Beth Taylor. I don't know, maybe planting that quote in the paper drove him you over the edge. You would have killed again if you called him St. Thomas Aquinas. Let's get back to work. Sign the release for Chanel's body? What? You want it released for burial, don't you? She's just wrapped up in a sheet downstairs, lying on a cold shelf. That the way you want her to be buried? In a sheet from the morgue? No. I... You were a good mother. You loved your baby. She shouldn't be cold and naked down there. It's a mother's job to keep her child warm. My daughter loves butterflies. In the summertime, when she was a kid, we'd take her to the park, and she'd run and try and catch them. I guess all kids have a thing for butterflies. But Chanel was born in the winter, and she died in the winter. She'll never know what it's like to run after butterflies in the summertime or how it feels to hold one in her hand. So I thought maybe when she's buried, it'd be nice if she had some butterflies with her, because she never got to see one. What happened to Chanel? She wouldn't stop crying. And, and I didn't know what else to do. So you threw her in that dumpster and walked away?
Another baby killer. A little younger than most of them, but. And I got to confess. That's my job, and I did it. I can cash this week's paycheck. Maybe you should take some time. <sighs> they haven't stopped killing each other yet. You know, Tanya got pregnant when she wasn't much older than Julianne is now. I can't really get past that. I wish I could just stop the clock and keep Julie the way she is. I just want her to stay my little girl. Connie. I'm sorry about today. We've been coming here Tuesdays and Thursdays for the last six months. Feels like we're cheating on someone. We're two unmarried people who are in love with each other, and all we ever seem to do is... This is not all we ever do. I know, I know. We, we see a movie, we take Julianne to dinner, and then I have to go home. I can't have you stay over when she's there, Michael. And I respect that. I would never want to come between you two. I just... I hate the fact that that badge comes between you and me. Connie, I want a place for me in your life, and it's starting to feel like that's never gonna happen. Michael, we'll have our time, I promise. When? This is all I have right now. I love you. This is all I have. Well. I'm warning you. According to the charts, I am supposed to have passed the peak of my sexual potency. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to continue to defy the odds. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can count on my help. Hey. I just walked 89th and 1st and 94th and 3rd, talked to six cabbies, three newsstand guys, and five hot dog vendors. Did you get anything? Cholesterol. You can't talk to five hot dog vendors and not test their wigs. Ugh. And now you're eating lunch? It's lunchtime. Did you talk to him? The mailman? Mm-mm. Tom, this is Commissioner Scallon from Eastbridge. Hiya, Tom. Eastbridge. Nice up there. Yeah. Uh, Tom, have you seen any of these women before? She looks familiar. It's Chris Camarena. She worked at Foster's Bookstore on 2nd. Have you seen guys hanging around the bookstore that might be regulars at Oak Tree Records or Ken's Restaurant? No. Do you have any idea what this guy looks like? We'll know we're on that. You think he'll do it again? Probably. Guys like this are usually driven by urges they can't control. You mean like he's programmed? Kind of. So it's not really his fault? No, we're not saying that. Okay? He's not a robot. I mean, he can pick his spots, and he's been smart enough to get away with it so far. Three murders. I guess so. <clears throat> Oops. Well, oh, sorry, I couldn't help. Hey. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, thanks. You had an awful lot of questions about the parrot. Tony, he's got the same shoes on we picked up in the footprint. the guy. Well, okay? we don't know that yet. Right, but it could be. And if it is, I don't want another victim on our hands. All right, right? I'll stay with them. Good. Why can we have these? 
Uh, give me an hour. All right. All right. Listen, Julian's going to be getting home from school, and I want to try and patch things up with her, okay? Fine. I'll check you out later. I'll see ya. Yo te dejo sola durante el día y esto es lo que tú estás haciendo. Ay, uh, sí, yo. So embarrassing. How long has this been going on? I like him, and now. How long, Julianne? couple of weeks. It is to never happen again. We were just kissing. No boys in this apartment unless Marsha or I are here. You know that. Don't you trust me? I thought I could. I'm gonna go live with Dad. You are not going to live with Dad. You live here. Why should I when you don't trust me? I'm not gonna get pregnant like you did. I don't want a baby to ruin my life. Julie. You're the most important thing in my life. Who are you kidding? Tom Dryden's worked for the Postal Service for eight and a half years. No prior record. Lives on 93rd and 2nd with his mother. And they've been pretty much inseparable all his life. And there was a two-year period when he was between five and seven that they both dropped out of sight. Thanks, Trent. Hey, I guess things still aren't patched between you and Julianne. Huh? Worst that ever got for me was David said he was tired of having to live up to being the police commissioner's son. Said he never wanted to talk to me again. What'd you do? Told him, fine. Just be sure to clean up your room once a month. Hey, hey. My best work. And in 58 minutes. What can I say? You're a true artist. Let's see it. Let's see. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Pilgrims, but uh, I don't see a gash on this one. So maybe he got a new pair of shoes. Maybe if we get a warrant to search Tom's place, we can find the old ones. Now, no judge is going to issue a warrant without Come solid. On. He's a grown man who lives with his mother. He says women have made him suffer. Women have made me suffer. At least order full scale surveillance. Come on, Tony, you run a department. Would you allot that kind of money and manpower to a guy based on what we've got? What, are you afraid of going out on a limb? Yes, with you right now, I am. The city can't afford it. Ernie Brackman's family just filed a $50 million wrongful death. You are 0 for 2, and you're grasping at straws. Yeah, but if Tom is the guy, he's going to kill again. Well, then, for God's sake, stop him. But you're going to need more than half-baked psychological theories and a mismatched pair of shoes. He's right. Maybe we're both thinking with thoughts. No, oh, what if we're right? What? You afraid of going out on a limb, too? Hurry up, dear. You'll be late for work. I'm not going in today. Oh, aren't you feeling well? I'm just taking the day off. You never wanted to tell me when you were sick. I'm fine, Mother. Don't worry. You were always afraid I would take you to the doctor for a shot, remember? Yes, I do. Would you like to go to the museum this afternoon? You go out with your friends, Tom. I'd have a better time with you. <laughs> oh, sweet dear. Oh, now, button up. Want to go for breakfast? We could go to Bobby's the way we used to. I was thinking maybe Saturday we can go out for lunch and we can get your hair done. Then we can pick up your... We can make all the plans you want, but then the phone's going to ring and you'll be off again. So what's the point? The point is that I said we'll go get your hair done on Saturday and that's what we're going to do. Now, do you want to go for breakfast or not? No. Muldoon. When? All right. I gotta go. 
Have a nice day. Okay. Let's go for breakfast. Juliana, I am sorry about the party. I feel really lousy about it. But my job is my job, and it puts food on this table. What do you want from me? I will never talk to you again. I know I have to live here until I graduate, but for the next three years, I'm not going to say a word, and don't you talk to me. Well, since communication is stopping as of now, once a month, be sure and clean up your room. Goodbye. started yesterday. Actress? Oh, is it that obvious? <laughs> <laughs> My name's Tom. Nice to meet you, Tom. I was wondering, could you wrap up one of those brownies to go? Ah, a little snack for later on. It's for my mother. Oh, that's nice. Most guys wouldn't even think of that. Most guys don't have a mother like mine. Thank you. I bet you're bored of hearing it. Be surprised how bored I'm not. French Lieutenant's Woman, that is my favorite book. I have every book he wrote. Really? Yeah. Do you live alone? I'm sorry, that was ungentlemanly. Oh. Uh, yeah, actually, I live alone just around the block, as a matter of fact. And I'm off in 20 minutes. Hey, you're doing great. Once you get into the apartment, you'll be able to hear us on this, OK? Try to get him to relax, then mention the boyfriend. He'll view it as a rejection. Maybe it'll set him off. I tried it. For a year, but it wasn't for me. Lucky you found out early. This is nice. Uh, most of it things from college. Someday, if I ever get a real job. Can I get you a drink? Whatever you're having. Okay. To your left. How long have you been acting? How long have you been acting? Oh, since sixth grade. I don't charge for seats, Tom. I did a lot of community theater and stuff. Then I finally decided to take the plunge and come out to New York. I don't see how you stand all the rejection. I don't plan to have much. To few rejections. To nice guys. Is that your brother? Mm, my boyfriend. He works in Providence. 
We can meet on weekends. Well, not the best arrangement, but... You didn't tell me that you had a... Ask him if he has a girlfriend. So do you date a lot? Tell him that's hard to believe. I'm sure you're just being modest. No, I'm not. I don't date much because I don't believe in stringing people along. Okay, here we go. I believe in telling the truth about my relationships. That's how I was brought up, to tell the truth. And the truth isn't always what people want to hear. Look, you don't have to. I don't have to get what? I don't have to get angry? He's going for it. What? I don't understand something. Why did you bring me up here? Look, you seem like a nice... Because I seem like someone you could string along, and that's really... No, what it's not... And all the time you had a boyfriend in Providence? Why should I have to put up with that? Back up. Show him that you're afraid. I don't have to put up with it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to mislead you. French lieutenant's woman, the collector, where are they? They're at your mother's. Oh, they're at my mother's. You didn't know where the glasses were. I just redecorated the kitchen, that's You had to open up three cabinets just to find them. You don't live here. Of course I live here, Tom. You tricked me into this. I didn't. Tom, that's ridiculous. I didn't trick you. Yes, you, you did. Tom. Yes, you did. You're a cop. <laughs> that's ridiculous. I'm not a cop. And you were trying to be cute. I saw him reading the book and I thought it was a way to hook him. But we didn't have it set up. Now he's out there and we can't get him. I didn't think he'd look for the books in the apartment. It is your job to think and you didn't do your job. If he kills another girl, you're gonna wear it. Is that all? That's all. You are out of line and completely unprofessional. I'm sorry I'm not up to Eastbridge standards, but... Drop that crap! She was working for you, and she was trying to... I don't care what she was trying to do. I only care about what she did to. She tipped him off. She doesn't deserve to have the next murder, if there is one, hanging on her neck. Or did you already forget what it was like when Tom tried to hang one on you? You're bleeding, Connie. Didn't you tell me that's a luxury you can't have? I'm putting myself on report and I'll write her a letter of apology. Bottom line is Tom's not gonna do anything now. He's just gonna lay low. He knows we don't have evidence that'll stick. If we did, we wouldn't have set up this sting. So we'll just lay low. He'll try something sooner or later. He can't help himself. We can't wait for that. We don't have the manpower to trail him. We gotta push his buttons, and this was the biggest button we had. Maybe not. Hello. Mrs. Dryden? I'm Detective Muldoon. This is Commissioner Scally. We spoke to you on the phone. Yes, won't you come in? Thank you. Good afternoon. Mrs. Dryden. Ardeth. Ardeth. The uh, women who were killed all lived and worked in this neighborhood, and we think whoever killed them might live here, too. You see, there's a comfort factor. He feels at ease around here. How long have you and your son lived in this building? Oh, tw 22 years. Okay. <laughs> Silly, isn't it? <laughs> Take my advice, don't get old. Uh, the murders took place between 9.30 at night and 5.30 in the morning. Oh, you know, that's why I don't go out anymore at night. Where was your son two nights ago, about 9.30? Oh, he was here with me. We had chicken kia for dinner. <laughs> that's his favorite. Then we played Scrabble and went to bed. What time did he go to bed? About 10.30. We have a witness to the murders, and uh, Tom fits the description that she gave us. That's impossible. <laughs> My son is a gentleman. If there were more people like him, things like these murders wouldn't take place. Well, maybe you could help us clear him. 
How long were you married to Tom's father? Oh, 11 years. It was not a happy marriage, I'm sorry to say. He was not a gentleman. There's a period from 1960 to 1962. How do you know about that? We're just doing our job. It was probably the worst time of my life. His father ran off with him. Where'd he take him? Oh, halfway across the country from one relative to another. Pennsylvania, Ohio, down to Texas. Do you remember the town or cities? Harrisburg, Columbus, and Austin. And uh, they just kept moving? I mean, Tom didn't go to school for two years? Well, his father had these ideas about practical education. <laughs> it was lunacy. Did you contact the police? Uh, no, we kept it in the family. You see, when I was finally able to get Tom back, his father never had anything to do with him again. I wasn't always 76. It's a very nice picture, don't you think? Yeah. Mother? I'm home. What are you doing here? We were just asking your mother a few... Get out! Dear. Since when can you just come into people's homes and start harassing them? Your, your, your tone of voice. I will not have you harassing my mother. Arden, thank you for your time. We'll see ourselves out. Tom's gonna do something. I don't know what he's gonna do, but I want you to stay real close to him. You got right? it. Right? Mother, they're just looking for someone to blame. Mother, please, do you, do you really believe I'm capable of something like that? Don't let that bitch turn you against me! I wish you wouldn't use language like that. Mother, would you... How about a nice dinner, all right? Well, forget all about this. I'll, I'll, I'll take you to Brandywine's. It's your favorite place. We'll go, I'm, we'll have a... I'm not hungry. Mother, please don't, please I'm, don't turn away like... I'm going to lie down Mother, now. please don't. Mother, please believe me. Will you please believe me? Muldoon. Michael. Oh, Michael, I'm leaving now. I I'll be there in... Oh. Well, we're still on for Thursday, right? Michael, I know that's what you want, but I told you. You can't or you won't. Well, aren't I entitled to be a part of that decision, too? Michael, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. But could, couldn't we just... Tom's missing two years are a total blank. It's like he fell off the face of the earth. Um, call the police in Harrisburg, Columbus, and Austin. That's where he was those two years. Start today, Trenton.
victims had auburn hair and blue eyes. So did Ardeth. So he was attracted to them because they reminded him of his mother. Maybe the attraction wasn't love. Yeah, but he lived with Ardeth all these years. If he hated her, what the hell has he been repressing? Muldoon, line three. Homicide, Muldoon. Yeah, he gave me the slip, but don't worry. I'll be back on him in a second. Where is he? He's up at 98th and 3rd. I don't know why. He... That's Julianne's school. What? He's going after Julianne. Hi, I'm a police officer. I work with your mother. She's in some trouble. When I had my gun jammed up against him, I was praying he'd make a move so I could blow his heart right out of his chest. I was that close, Tony. I wasn't thinking like a cop anymore. You were thinking like Julianne's mother. But you still were a cop. You didn't cross that line. That's what counts. Artis. She's Tom's weakness. I gotta go after that. Maybe her weakness is what happened during those two years. I'll go after that. Connie, how much longer do you want Tom to wait? Until he's ready. What's he doing? He's climbing the walls. Then he's ready. How do you think your mother felt when she found out her only son was a murderer? How do you feel, Tom? Knowing you broke the heart of the most important person in your life. My mother isn't stupid. She'd never believe you. Then why isn't she here? Any mother who really loved her son wouldn't let him sit in a place like this for three hours. She probably doesn't know where I am. Sure she does. This is a warrant, Tom, to search your place. Our people are there right now. They told her everything. About you, the murders. She did the best she could, Tom. She tried to raise you right, make you into a gentleman. But when she saw those pictures... What pictures? She knew she failed. What you did to those girls. I've never hurt anyone. How can you just turn a mother against her own son like that? Just break up a family? For God's sake, I'm all she's got. You got it backwards, Tom. She's all you got. We depend on each other. You want her back? Make her understand why you did what you did. Then she'll forgive you. Otherwise, you've lost her. Forever. And you're both gonna be all alone. What do you want from me? Tell me what you did to Tracy Donnelly, Christine Camarena, and Beth Taylor. <laughs> My mother loves me. You're making a mistake. Tom didn't do those terrible things. He couldn't have. Well, I need to ask you a few more questions about him. Uh, if Tom is innocent, maybe it'll help him. Yes, if it will help Tom. I'm especially interested in the period between 1960 and 1962. I told you before, my husband took him away. Well, you said they traveled a bit. Uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Arkansas. Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Texas. It was a terrible time. Especially for him. 
We checked on it. Your husband died in 1960. Uh, well, those, those were very hard years. I was out of work. It was humiliating. I made up the story about Tom's father just to hide my embarrassment. So you were in New York the whole time? That's right. Are you a baseball fan, Ardeth? You, you no. follow the Houston Astros? Uh, well, what does that have to do with... Well, the Houston Astros were once an expansion team. They were originally called the Colt 45s. That was in 1962. Tom was in Texas that year, wasn't he? But he wasn't with his father, he was with you, wasn't he? What happened down there, Ardeth? Ardeth? Those girls drove you to it. They led you on, then they dumped you. I'm ashamed to admit that women of my generation don't respect gentlemen. You try to be polite, they make fun of you. What do they do? They lie. How? They make you think they care about you? And then when you're hooked, they tell you they got a boyfriend? When did Tracy tell you about her boyfriend? I didn't know her. Is she laughing at you, Tom? I bet you wanted to wipe that laugh right off her face. Why do they laugh at you, Tom? They think I'm weak. And you're just trying to be a gentleman. That's right. How long has it been since you were with a woman? <laughs> you a virgin, Tom? I've had lots of women. Then tell me about it. That's not... A gentleman doesn't talk about those things. I see. Well, you figure out what you do want to talk about. Tom's father was a horrible man. You can't imagine what it was like to live with him. The abuse, physical and mental. One day he came after me with a knife. After that, I knew I had to get away. Not just for my sake, but for Tom's. That's why you moved to Texas, to get away from your husband? He died. A couple of months after we left. I didn't find that out for two years, but as soon as I knew, I came back here. What happened when you were in Texas? I worked at odd jobs, tried to be a good mother to Tom. Tom tried to be a good boy. Knew what? His father was inside him. It had to be. As much as I loved Tom, I knew he was still his father's son. Can you imagine what it's like to look at a boy you gave birth to, who you love more than you love yourself? and know that inside him, there's a monster. I couldn't let that monster out, ever. What did you do, Ardeth? What did you do? She had him sterilized? So Tom would never be able to pass on his father's character defects to another generation. Yeah. It took her two years to find a doctor who'd do it. After a while, she stopped being particular. The operation was botched. Except for the little children. Yeah. Tracy Donnelly, Chris Camarena, Beth Taylor, and the reason you killed them, your mother. She's the cruelest person you've ever known. 
My mother's a saint. You hate her. You killed them because you couldn't kill her. No, 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 I love my mother. You don't know how much I... She raised me all alone. She made sure I grew up to be a gentleman. When I was a kid and no one would play catch with me, she did. She took me fishing. We, we went to concerts. She taught me to love books. My mother made me what a... And what are you, Tom? You have every right to hate her. After what she did to you... My mother never did anything to me. You know she did. No, she would never hurt me. It's because of your mother you can't get it up. No. She told us the secret that's been killing you for 30 years. Now everybody's gonna know. It's gonna be in every paper. Everyone's gonna know what your mother did to you. Things. They're, they're so strong. They, they must have known. wasn't his fault. Sure it was. But it wasn't his alone. And he's not the only one that should be punished for it. God has already judged Tom's father. We have to be satisfied with that. Seven open cases. Not for all the black bean soup in New York. No harm, Elise. I just hope things work out between you and Julianne. Thanks. I'm gonna make sure of that. Goodbye, Commissioner. Goodbye, Detective. Hey, Tony. Yeah. Take care. I can't believe we're really doing this. Why not? Well, you know, something usually gets in the way. I told you, this is gonna be our day. We're gonna do the hair thing, we'll have lunch. It's our time. This is 555-1232. Please leave a message. Yeah, Connie, it's Mel. We need you down here. I'm shorthanded to Giorgio's called in sick. McAndrews has an AA meeting. You gonna answer or what? Connie. Connie? Let's go. Connie! 